If you're going through a tough time right now, please make sure you reach out to a professional, your friends, and your family. If your children are involved in the divorce process, whatever you do, please do not talk anything bad or negative about your ex in front of your kids. I know it can be very tempting sometimes, but you have to resist the urge. And even if your ex is the one that's talking bad about you with your kids, you have to be the better person and not talk anything bad about your spouse. When they grow up, they will realize everything and appreciate you more. Co-parenting is probably the hardest thing that you ever have to do, even after a divorce. Trust me, I know this. And I would never say anything bad about my ex-wife to my daughter, no matter what happens. And unfortunately, a lot of divorces are caused by financial disagreements. And I went through a divorce process over a decade ago and I never want to do something or go through anything like that again. And I've never talked about divorce on this channel before so I wanted to share some of my experiences and give you some financial guidance on what you should do when you're going through a separation or a divorce. The first day of your divorce process is when your spouse moves out of the house or if your spouse reaches out to an attorney. And even if your spouse says that the divorce will be painless. Trust me, there will be disagreements during the process. So the first thing you should do is to obtain an attorney. If you have a prenuptial agreement, that's something you need to review immediately because you need to figure out how your assets and debts will be divided based on your prenup. The next thing you need to do is start documenting your financial statements. If your separation or the divorce process starts in the month of September, I will take a screenshot of every bank and investment statement you guys have in joint accounts and separate accounts starting that month. You should also save your credit card statements, bills, and mortgage statements. And the biggest asset most people own is their primary home or property. And you want to keep things simple by selling uh, the house and splitting the equity. Whatever happens, don't keep the house and stay in the house together. You'd be surprised how many divorced couples actually end up staying together in the same house after their divorce and that's just completely weird in my opinion and you don't want any assets tied up unless you want to deal with joint assets for the rest of your life and another way you could uh, probably do is to buy the other person out of the house if you have the cash to do so it's basically removing you or your spouse's name from the deed by filing a quick uh, quick claim deed you're basically buying that person out to give up any right to the property. And the next thing you need to do immediately is to open up your individual account and have your paychecks go to your individual checking account. Now, this might be tricky if one of your spouses is a stay at home parent or spouse and your judge could order long term or lump sum alimony payments if you're not financially capable of supporting yourself. And due to the long divorce process, each state actually allows judges to award temporary alimony until the divorce is over if you can't come to an agreement. And it's especially difficult for a stay-at-home parent who also has to care for your kids. The best thing to do is to set your feelings aside so that you don't leave your spouse and kids out to dry during your divorce process. And if you can't come to an agreement, then I would ask the judge to award temporary al uh, alimony until then. And if both of you are working and making equal wages, then this process will be somewhat easier for you. And you still want to make sure your paychecks are going into your individual checking account. And as far as your savings accounts go, like your emergency fund, you're both most likely going to split them in half. And for example, if you had $20,000 saved in your emergency fund and you guys decided to split it, I would document the splitting process and save the receipt or in invoice or statements to later show, show the court that you've already split the cash, uh, cash reserve. If you're on your financial independence journey and you've been following my FIRE checklist, you can download this checklist for free by visiting firesidechat.com contact. I would suggest pausing at step five to save as much cash as you can in your emergency fund or in cash reserve. You have a lot of unknowns coming up, like how long the divorce process will last, depending on the disputes or disagreements you'll both have, not to mention how expensive your legal fees could be if the process drags on. If you're on step two, then I would encourage each of you to save uh, to have cash saved up to the deductibles for your medical, car, and health insurance. 
I would still contribute up to the employer match for your 401k, TSP, or other types of employer-sponsored retirement plan. But if you feel like you're going to be short on cash, then it's okay to just turn off your retirement contributions to save as much cash as possible. And if you also think that you're going to end up giving up some of your retirement accounts to your soon-to-be ex-spouse, then I would consider pausing the contributions if that's what your attorney advises you to do. If you're both in debt, chances are you're both gonna be responsible for the overall debt, regardless of whose name is on the debt or account. Most states now follow common law, so the court will hold both of you responsible for credit cards, personal loans, or other loans that are solely under your name or in both of your names. Student loans are kind of an exception, especially if you got the student loan before getting married, because uh, legally student loan debt is considered separate property and remains so after the divorce. I'm not an attorney and this is not legal advice. Every student loan is situational dependent, so please get with your attorney to figure out the loan uh, consolidation. And you and your spouse will need to determine if the student loan is a separate or marital debt. And I will still make sure to continue to pay your minimum debt repayment until your divorce is finalized. In a divorce, you're most likely required to divide the retirement assets. And it could be a wide range of things like your pension plan, 401k, IRA, and HSA. And it also depends on how long you guys were married for. In the divorce decree, the court will um, mandate what's called a Qualified Domestic Relations Order or QDRO to divide qualified retirement plan assets between the owner and the ex-spouse. And the IRS will not tax your attacks you or penalize you for this process so you're not selling any assets and then transfer it you're gonna keep it in kind if you're a non-working spouse i strongly recommend you open a traditional ira and a roth ira immediately if you don't already have one every retirement account is designated by one social security identity or one name your 401k tsp ira or hsa cannot be joint accounts so when the court orders the division of your retirement assets you want to make sure you have a traditional IRA and a Roth IRA to receive rollovers from your ex-spouse's retirement accounts. And the next thing I would work on is changing the beneficiaries to your existing financial accounts. A lot of people actually forget to do this even after their divorces are finalized. And unless you have a living trust or some type of estate plan, I would not directly designate your children under the age of 18 as beneficiaries. And here's why. Because your kids are considered minors. The probate court, if something happens to you, would appoint a legal guardian to manage or watch over the money until your child becomes a legal adult. And you probably wouldn't want the, the court to appoint your ex-spouse to be the legal guardian of your money, right? For your life insurance policy, as an example, I would designate a trustworthy and financially responsible adult guardian to set up a Uniform Transfers to Minors Act or UTMA account to manage the money for your child. If you have larger assets, establishing a trust for your child and naming the trust as the beneficiary may be the best option for you. You can be the trustee of your own trust and you would just need to designate an alternate trustee should anything happens to you. I'm probably going to make a separate video about the trust in the near future. In your divorce, it's going to be much more complicated if you have children involved. You have to keep children's best interests in mind during the divorce process. If you have a 529 college plan for your child, you can either keep it um, jointly and contribute to it uh, together, or if you don't want to have any joint accounts after the divorce, you can create a separate 529 plan for each parent and contribute separately. And you both need to have an agreement on how to pay for your child's miscellaneous expenses on top of the child support payments unless your agreement is to just pay child support depending on the child uh, custody placement. You should also have an agreement on who's claiming your child on the tax return during the tax season unless one of you has decided to have full custody of the child. And that's something I really wish I had done during my divorce uh, to uncomplicate things. If you're splitting up but not yet divorced before the end of the tax year, you have the option of filing a joint return or separate returns, or it's called married filing separately. So if you're still married as of December 31st, 
then you have the option to file your taxes jointly or separately. And once the divorce is finalized, then you no longer have the option to file taxes jointly or marry separately. And you're either filing as a single person or head of the household. You have a higher tax deduction when you file your taxes as a uh, head of household. You have to have your child or a qualifying person very rewarding living with you for more than half the year and pay for more than half the cost of maintaining a home such as your mortgage utilities and food and both parents could qualify for a uh, head of household if you have multiple children as long as one child lives with each parent for more than half the year and if you have joint custody then you should have an agreement in place to alternate claiming the head of household filing status every single year or every other year you should keep a detailed record of when your child stays with you or when your child stays with your ex-spouse a divorce can be extremely messy and i'm sorry if you're going through one right now it's emotionally exhausting and i completely understand what you're going through if you have children involved in the divorce always do what's best for you and your children and be calm and explain to them with your spouse what's going on if that's possible you should never argue or fight in front of your kids or attempt to get them on your side of the argument and never ever ever use your kids as a weapon to get what you want out of a divorce no matter how much you dislike or hate your spouse you have to set your feelings aside and never interfere with the relationship between your children and your ex-spouse what I also don't want you to do is irresponsibly spend money. I did that during and right after my divorce. And then I put myself into $110,000 in total debt. Once you've exhausted all options to save your marriage, it's time for you to work on yourself and protect your future. I am in the process of creating a financial checklist for marriage, divorce, and other significant life events. You can sign up for my email listing by visiting firesuchhead.com slash contact, and I'll notify you as soon as the checklist become available. And if you want to have a chat with me about your current financial situation, you can schedule a free one-on-one 20-minute -on -one financial coaching session by visiting firesuchhead.com slash coaching. So with that said, I appreciate you watching my video. Don't forget to subscribe, and I hope to see you in the next video. Have a good one.